Welcome to Biz Filing's Business Podcast, where colleagues and specialists share some advice to help keep your business committed to success. Our guest this week on Biz Filing's Business Podcast is Catherine Jatan. She is the CEO of Jetpack, which is a brand new resource for education leaders. She's here to tell us about the business, where she got the inspiration for it, and how she got it off the ground. And Catherine, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about what Jetpack is all about. It's a tool for teachers to use so that they can quickly have access to lesson plans that are calibrated for their students. And it also gives teachers the leadership development tools to become better leaders for themselves and also to inspire the leader in each of their students. So it really focuses on helping students to see how education fits in with their long-term goals and to see how they can become a better leader of themselves, their peers, and their community. And so this is, is this kind of a pooling of resources from teachers around the country? Let's see what other mm-hmm. fourth grade teachers, for example, are, are doing when it comes to math. I have some students who are struggling with division or whatever, and you can see how other teachers are approaching that issue. Is that kind of the, the idea? It's a three-part system. So the first part are the resources, the lesson plans, and the quiz questions that are used to rate the lesson plans for your class. So the point of that part of the system is to show which lesson plans are actually effective and which lesson plans are engaging. Because what I found in my first year of teaching is that, you know, some lessons were engaging, but then if you looked at what the students were learning, they really weren't retaining a lot of the information. So, you know, if you're coloring a plant cell in science class, that that might be something that the students enjoy, but it might not be something that will actually get them to learn. So that's the first part. And then the second part is a goal setting system for students and teachers so that they can stay focused on how their attitudes affect their behaviors and how their behaviors affect their long-term outcomes. And then the third part is a monthly leadership development program to make sure that the culture in the classroom is a culture of achievement and it's a very positive transformational experience for the students and for the teacher. Catherine, uh, when it comes to the lesson plans, which we started talking about, is there mm-hmm. is there an evaluation system that's part of this so teachers can go back and say, this one right here really worked well for me, or this one, yeah, I don't know if it worked quite well. Uh, it might work for other people, but it just didn't work for my class. Yes. So teachers can rate the lesson plans And then students will rate it based upon how much they enjoyed it. And the system will also get rated based upon the student's quiz mastery scores. So if a lesson plan has a teacher rating where, you know, they really like it, the students had a high mastery score on their quiz from after going over the lesson plan. And then thirdly, if they enjoyed it, then that lesson plan is going to bubble up to the top a little bit like Google search. And eventually we will have a system where our system gets to know your teaching style and your students' learning preferences. And it'll suggest lesson plans for you so that if your students do really well with a science lab, then it's going to suggest another science lab for you. If your students do really well with some type of project-based learning, then the system will be able to suggest the lesson plans um, for your individual students. So the more you use it, the more it can be tailored to uh, what your students need. Obviously, Mm -hmm. you're putting this all together. You'd mentioned the three major components Mm -hmm. Did you sense a a lack of this out there right now for teachers? What inspired you to go down this road? My first month of teaching, I had heard that my students were two years behind their peers. And so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, every minute counts. Like we have to immediately get started on teaching these lesson plans, on, you know, memorizing things, having critical thinking. But what I didn't know is that that needs to come second. The first thing that needs to happen in a classroom is for a teacher to set it up so that she or he can develop a relationship with their student and then make the class relevant to their short and long-term goals. And then thirdly, that's when you can start with the lesson plans. But a lot of teachers feel the same way and they're, they're trying to, you know, really jump into the content and curriculum. But you first have to make sure that your students are internally motivated and inspired to learn and believe that they can because If they don't want to and if they don't believe that they can, they're not going to be listening. They're not going to be trying their best. They're not going to see how these lesson plans are going to help them. So either they're not going to be actively participating or they're going to be acting up. And so those great lesson plans 
fall on deaf ears and the students don't benefit from them. It's a system that I designed, but it's really a system that any teacher can use to help um, motivate and inspire their students and then find lesson plans that are engaging that the students like. We're talking with Catherine Jatan. She's the CEO of Jetpack. You can learn more about it at jetpack.com. That's J-E-T-T-P-A-K-K. Dot yes. com. So, Catherine, how did you get this from dream to reality? How did you turn this into a business? What were the successes and some of the stumbles along the way? I would say talking to a lot of people is important just to get a lot of feedback. There's a lot of people who have interesting experiences, but there's a number of different ways that you can go about starting a business. So I think it's important to understand what options you have and then choose the options that make the most sense for you. So for me, I participated in the Triangle Startup Weekend by Google, CT, and HQ Raleigh, and I won third place. And that was amazing because with the third place prize, I won incorporation from CT, which was incredibly helpful to set up my business and make sure that I'm legally protected as well. So that was one way. The other ways that you can get the business started is looking at who your future customers are, reaching out to them. Um, learning about who's going to be on your team. So I've talked to 199 people, and 13 of them are now on my team, um, some part-time, some you know every so often when they can. So I think it's, it's really just understanding that you have options and that you can keep looking and keep just trying to take one step forwards. What about money? This is obviously kind of a new concept. Uh, a lot of investors like to go with kind of established ideas. This is obviously a cutting edge one that obviously was received very well at the seminar you mentioned earlier. How did you uh, raise the money to get this off the ground? That's really something that we're still working on right now. I'm working with people who are very generous and very understanding about how starting a business goes. Finding a way to finance it is, you know, that's that's crucial because People will work for free for you for a while, but eventually, you know, they will be expected to be paid. That's generally how work works. Um, So I've been looking at grant applications. Um, We applied to the SBIR program through the Department of Education. It was a grant that ended up being around 100 pages by the time we were finished. And then there's other grant opportunities for for for-profit businesses. So we're really exploring all of our options, um, even looking at venture capitalists or angel investors as well to um, have the funding to really move forwards at a quicker pace. And you also took part in a zero interest loan program. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, I did, which is absolutely incredible. The Kiva loan, um, it's a really good opportunity. It's, you know, it's great marketing and it's an opportunity to have fundings for the business and have 0% interest, which is incredible. There's not a lot of opportunities out there that have that have that interest rate. So I'm really I'm really excited and I'm really looking forward to be able to put that money towards really good use and get the most out of every dollar that's available. Catherine, just about a minute left in our conversation here. What's your timetable for really getting this ramped up and when can uh, teachers uh, start taking advantage of all this? So teachers can actually go ahead and um, sign up now. There's a way for them to access the quiz questions and submit their own quiz questions to have a crowdsourced bank of questions so they can already go ahead and start using it. I would say within the next three months, we're really hoping that one of our grants will come through. And then from there, we'll spend about another two to three months developing it pretty intensely. And we hope to have it um, in our pilot schools in the fall. Well, congratulations on all your success. Again, it's jetpack.com, J-E-T-T-P-A-K-K.com. Catherine, thanks thanks very much for being with us. Yes, thank you. Catherine Jatan is CEO of Jetpack. Again, jetpack.com. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for Biz Filings Business Podcast. Thanks for joining us on Biz Filings Business Podcast. Be sure to visit our website, bizfilings.com, and follow at bizfilings on Twitter. We'll see you next time on Biz Filings Business Podcast.